Hello, everyone. Welcome to the channel of Chen Mo. In this video, we will keep on talking about how to reconcile a GST account for the year-end financial report. GST reconciliation is an area many junior accountants find difficult when they start to work in the first six or twelve months, or even longer in their career. But in fact, once we understand what we are doing, it's not that hard. Why do we need to reconcile the GST when we are working on the financial report, and what does it mean by GST reconciliation? Let's look at them together. In the third video on the topic of BAS and GST, we've roughly introduced what GST is. When the business is registered for GST, they are obliged to lodge monthly, quarterly, or yearly BAS. A GST liability is payable to the ATO. All GST credit is available to be claimed back from the ATO. This GST liability or asset is offset when the payment is processed either to or from ATO. However, the timing between the process of the payments and the point when the liability or asset raised is different. Thus, we create an account named as GST payable or receivable to present the GST liability or asset as at the date of 30th June. When it is in a payable position, it is a liability. When it is in a receivable position, it is an asset. Let's say on the financial statements, the GST liability is five thousand, which means as at thirtieth June of this financial year, the business owes ATO five thousand dollars worth of GST. Well, how do we know this amount is correct? Now we need to refer to the quarterly bas the business has lodged to the ATO. Assuming that they were lodged on a quarterly basis, by looking at the BAS reported, we can see that four quarterly BAS were all lodged, and the payments for the first three quarters were all processed before 30th of June. However, the June quarter BAS, five thousand dollars payable, has not been processed by the business yet. So we can say that as at 30th June, the business owes ATO five thousand dollars. Therefore, GST liability of five thousand dollars. Is showing up on the financial report. Now, let's think for a second. Even though the GST account on your draft financial statements agreed to the best lodge to ATO, does that a hundred percent guarantee that the value of the GST liability or asset is correct? Actually, not necessarily, because if any mistake was made on the best reported, the GST account is not actually correct. And in fact, in majority of the cases. The value of the GST account on our draft financial report is not equal to that of the BAS lodged. This is because very likely there are GST adjustments made in regard to the transactions in both the bookkeeping process and the year-end adjustments after the BAS has already been lodged. Another reason for the variance is that some businesses prepare the financial statements on a accrual basis but lodge BAS on cash basis. Let's have a look at an example of GST reconciliation. ABC Pitwine Limited lodged the following BAS during the year ending 30th June 2020: 3,500 payable lodged on 23rd of October 2019; 4,000 payable lodged on the 21st February of 2020; and 4,200 payable lodged on the 20th May of 2020; and 5,000 payable lodged. On the 22nd July of 2020, all the payments were processed a week after the lodgement. So now we can see that from the ATO's perspective, as at 30th June 2020, ABC owes $5,000 to ATO. However, when we receive the preliminary bookkeeping account from the client, the GST liability account shows $5,300. So now we need to check the relevant accounts and check with the client if necessary to identify the variance and whether it is correct on the bookkeeping account. Also, when we are preparing for the financial report and work on the work papers, we may make year-end adjustments that ended up affecting the GST accounts too. So let's say after the year-end adjustments, the GST liability account becomes four thousand and eight hundred. Now, what's next? From experience, here is where many graduates or junior accountants find confused when it comes to GST reconciliation. It is often mistaken that the goal of the GST reconciliation is to make the value of the GST account 
on the year-end financial report equal to the best loss to ATO. But actually, the goal is to find the variance and identify what is the correct GST liability or asset. For example, in the above case, after making all the valid adjustments, we came to the conclusion that $4,800 payable is the correct GST liability as at 30th June. Then we should communicate with the client for the amendments of the best watch. To assist us in identifying the variance, Excel web papers are created for GST reconciliation. The exact details and the layout of the web paper is different in different firms, but the logic is to summarize and compare the best lodged with the GST account showing on the financial report and identify the variances so that the decisions can be made on either adjusting the accounts or amending the BAS. Note that if the client lodged BAS on cash basis, GST are adjusted for debtors and creditors on the web paper before identifying the variances. Also, if the variance between the BAS and GST accounts in opening balance was not dealt with, for example, the best that should be amended was not amended, then that variance would carry forward to this year's balance as well on the GST accounts. Okay, that's all for today. GST is an important step for almost all clients who work when preparing for the financial reports. Hope this video is helpful to you in understanding the GST reconciliation in a nutshell. See you next time.